All right, everybody. Welcome to the first in a series about our new upcoming PMDG 737 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Where to start? Yeah, the beginning. That's usually the best place. This video is going to take us very quickly through the installation process and then through a couple of important notes that you should be aware of the first time you run the product. So if you're an advanced user, you can skip to those. All right. To kick off installation, simply click on the installer that you downloaded from pmdg.com. If you are installing from Marketplace, all of this is handled for you, but if you downloaded from pmdg.com, run the installer. Our installer is designed to take care of everything for you so that you don't have to worry about where to put things, etc., etc. So it'll come up and running here. You just want to click that you accept the end user license agreement after reading it, of course. Up here, the activation key that was sent to you in your email. You want to put that in there. This is the super secret unlocks everything at PMDG license key that you can use if you like. That's a joke for those that didn't get it. All right, so once you've activated, the installer will be off and running and it will do everything for you through the magic of video editing. I have fast forwarded this. This process takes about two minutes, so I just skipped it to make it go fast so that we could get on to the next topic here. All right, now that it's done, you're going to have a window that pops up to tell you that installation is finished. You'll want to go ahead and click OK there. The installer is automatically going to run the PMDG Operations Center, and this is useful for installing liveries and that sort of thing. I'm just going to close that out for now because we're going to come back to that as a different video entirely. All right, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I've got it here on the desktop, and I'm going to show you some installed liveries and launching the airplane, and then we're going to talk about some very important topics. So, all right, we'll start off by clicking on the airplane here. You get into the aircraft selection menu and click on liveries. You can see I've, I've already installed a couple of liveries here just to show you what it looks like when they're there. So you can scroll through those and pick one if you've got it installed and then fly that. For now, we're going to stick with the PMDG house livery. So we'll stick with that for now. And we're going to cover a couple of quick topics here. Danger areas, things not to do because they'll kind of ruin your day. All right, first, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, they give you this whole weight and balance uh, thing here. Don't touch it. We're going to show you how to do all this stuff inside the airplane itself. If you also come into this failures menu here, again, don't touch it. Not with using uh, a PMDG product. This just won't give you the results you need. We have an entire uh, heuristic failure mechanism that we've programmed. I'll show you how to use that in another video. You can look for that in this uh, video series. And then also this customization here, there, there's a bunch of stuff in here. We just recommend when using a PMDG product, don't use it. You, you're you going to get kind of um, results that may conflict with some of the things that, that we've programmed into your airplane for realism. So they're great for other products, not so great for ours. All right, so we'll select a runway here. We're going to go to Renton, of course, because Zavetsky Design gave us such a fantastic airport to work with here. We're going to click on fly now. And this brings us to the second danger topic of the day. Um, this is actually more an informative point. You're probably used to looking at this screen right here. The astute will also have noticed that after you install a new airplane or a new scenery, if it's fairly complex airplane or complex scenery, that this screen remains active longer than normal. What we have discovered as we've been building out the 737 is that the first time you run each of the different 737s included, so for example, the passenger version, the BBJ, and the, the cargo version, each of those independently will cause this screen to linger a little bit longer. What's a little bit? Well, that kind of depends on how much memory you have on your machine. For example, the first time I run the passenger version of the airplane, I have a 64 gigabyte machine. I'm looking at this screen for about 11 to 12 minutes. Subsequent times when I run the passenger version of the airplane, doesn't matter if it's a different livery or the same livery, it takes about a minute and a half. If I then switch and run the BBJ, 
The first time I run the BBJ, I'm looking at this screen for about 11 and a half to 12 minutes. Subsequent times when I run the BBJ, it's about a minute and a half to two minutes. Again, just to be repetitive, when I then choose the cargo airplane, I'm going to look at this screen for about 11 and a half to 12 minutes. This is a normal part of Microsoft Flight Simulator's process. It is doing a whole bunch of compilation in the background the first time it sees a new airplane type. So just expect that and know it's going to be there. We bring this up just to make sure that users who might have slightly slower processors or slightly less memory don't get fooled into thinking that the sim is hung after their installation. The way you can tell that things are still moving along is if you watch the text scroll at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that it keeps updating. It's, it's sort of just a little drive-in theater of information that scrolls by, and you'll see the text there change now and then as the simulator is doing all of its processing. So that's what you should watch for. Don't panic. It might take some time. It only does that the first time you run each of those airframes. And from then on, things will go much more smoothly. Now, I do want to warn you about one thing. You are going to see some folks on the internet who are going to point out that if you install a developer version and you switch this setting and that setting, you can get through this compilation process faster. Danger. If you do that in the development environment, yes, you'll get through it faster, but the sim gets through it faster because it skips all of the optimizations that take place in order to ensure that the airplane runs well. And this will reduce the performance of the airplane in the sim anywhere from 60 to 75 percent. That's bad. So don't read everything you hear on the internet. Don't do it. It's not going to save you any headache. All right. Here we are, we've, through the magic of editing, I've skipped us forward through this 12 minutes or so, and we are now entering the sim. That covers it for installation. It's pretty straightforward. Again, for those of you coming to us through Microsoft Marketplace, the sim handles the entire installation process for you, but all the other notes do apply. We've got a bunch more video coming for you. Thanks for tuning in. I know some of you are probably hoping I'll just let it continue to play here so you can see just how cool it really is but hey you know i'm not going to you're gonna to have to tune in for another video in order to see that all right that's it for this one we'll see you next time thanks again for your support of pmdg